Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to Chocolate Lemon. This is our very first episode. I'm Fire. And I'm Katie. And I do what I want. I don't feel safe. Hey, I don't I'm feel safe. Lemon. Okay, so we have a really good show for you the first episode. We're going to talk about some things that may or may not interest you sexually. But what we do know is the show is going to be awesome. Awesome, so awesome. So what the show is about is video games and video game culture. And we do fun stuff, so like teaching you how to do the that is Katie's default dance move, don't mind that. You'll be seeing that a lot throughout these following episodes and the following season because sadly, Katie is a special child. Today's show, we have some interesting stuff from the lab to get better at Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and we're going out to Chinatown, well, what's remaining of Chinatown because it closed recently. And we also went out to PAX as well in Boston and we have that coming up for you and then we also have some reviews going on done by yours truly. Sounds fun, sounds fun. Stay yeah. tuned. As you guys may or may have not heard, Chinatown Fairs is closed down, which sucks. Okay. I'm not gonna say any more than that. But it was open for about like what, 50 years or so? Okay. Yeah, it was open for a really long time. And this is actually where I got started playing video games. Really? My my brother when I took him when I was little, oh. and I fell in love. My passion for video games has begun, and now it's just gone. Well, to be honest, New York City never really had an arcade scene to begin with. There was Broadway City, which closed down to, to police activity. There's Leisure Bowl, which is an arcade in Port Authority, which isn't really a true arcade. And then there's Dave & Buster's, which is like a restaurant chain that has video games in it. Now, Chinatown Fair has been a consistent. It has been here for 50 years. And on Friday nights, I used to go down there and play Street Fighter and Street Fighter 4 against people. I used to play Guilty Gear as well. But now that it's closed, uh, Henry Sen, one of the operators of Next Level, well, the operator of Next Level because he's the owner, has opened up his spot in Brooklyn. We're here at Guard Crush with the mastermind behind it all, Henry motherfucking Sen. Henry. What's up? What's so, up, Chris? Next level, where'd you come up with the idea to say, hey, I want to do this? I want to do this for the community because Chinatown Fair just closed mm -hmm. recently, like a month ago. So, you know, the gamers had no place to go. Everyone's telling me, ah, oh, come on, Henry, you got to open up shop. You got to do something. And I said, I will. But, you know, it's been taking a while because of the licensing with the city and stuff. Yeah. I'm missing just one permit right now. I'm not missing one permit, but, you know, I'm going to get approved soon. I just need the fire inspection right. and I'll be done. Then I'll be closed down for about two weeks for construction. Are you a Brooklyn native or...? I'm, I'm not really a Brooklyn native. I used to live in Manhattan, right across the street from Chinatown Fair. That's where I got started. You know? right. And I basically used to work at CF for a long time. Mm. I started working there when I was 16, passing out change, you know, and being like, yeah. oh, you want some change? And I gradually came to like the competition because, you know, I'm standing there, I'm watching people talk to each other. I'm yeah. like, I can do better than this guy. Yeah. I could body them. Then you just jump on the, the cabs and stuff like that. Yeah, because I observe, I go like, I know this guy's making mistakes. Now, I used to stand there so frequently, like eight hours straight, you go like, this is boring. Yeah. Once I get to work, I'm body him. Beat this guy free. I've seen you in Japan sometimes too. Does that come from your Chinatown Fair experience? No, I go to Japan because there's SBO there and it's it's sort of like the Olympics of gaming. Yeah. You know, but you know, it's slowly, that's more like it's Japan now. But now in America, we have our own Olympics. It's EVO. Oh, right. Yeah, so everyone wants to train up for EVO. Even, even the international people come to EVO because there's not a lot of restrictions like SBO, you have to qualify and stuff. Yeah, you know? it's really sp specific. Like I remember I tried to buy a ticket for uh, the, mm -hmm. the Street Fighter 4 finals and they were sold out at 8 in the morning and I was like, what the f***? Everything on video game blew up. It was just too awesome. See, I found the Witch's Key. So I did reshape Destiny to a blue screen. Question, so is there any like bad blood between you and the people that ran Chinatown Fair because you know, you got all the good shit, to be honest with you. There's no bad blood. I just think that their situation was a bit different mm. compared to like uh, the situation that they were in like three months ago where they couldn't afford to buy the game. Yeah. That's different. But you know, the landlord's getting greedy. He wants more money. Business has been here 50 years. He, he doesn't care, basically, right. you know. 
He's thinking about himself. Portal 2 is a sequel to a 2007 first-person puzzle game where you use portals to solve various puzzles. Controls are simple and most of the puzzles require no thought, but if you're stuck, take a break and come back to it later. Visually, there's a subtle difference in comparison to the first game, but it's an improvement. Voice acting is superb and the black humor is even better this time around. Music cues are also extremely well done and talking out the solutions during the co-op campaign feels rewarding. Overall, Portal 2 had just the right amount of puzzles, story, and length to make it just right. For science. So we got to head up to scenic, sunny, and always beautiful Boston. Awesome. She can't get it, it's sarcasm, her, her stuff is broken. Anyway, we got to hang out at the home of the Celtics and the Red Sox in Boston and get some beer. In Boston and the cat. And the beer, and then we play some games in the cat. But we went to Penny Arcade Expo East, which is based on a comic strip called Penny Arcade. And they do PAX Prime in Seattle, but they do PAX East in Boston because it's the only city that would allow something like that. Go figure. So this was my second year at PAX, and I actually played in more tournaments, and I interacted with the community, and I saw a bunch of people that I knew mysteriously from my questionable past life. A little bit. Wasn't this your first time? This was my first time. It was amazing. I don't know what you took out of this experience. Apparently, you think you need sarcasm for that. But for me, this is honestly one of the best experiences I've ever had. Maybe it's because my first convention, I don't really know, but I liked everything about it. I love the cosplay artists, I love the panels that were there, all the game developers that were there. I thought it was incredible. I really, really liked it. My favorite part is when we crossed the bridge and then it collapsed. Line for like Coronet Street. We were in line for the uh, keynote uh, speaker this morning, Jane McGonigal. Uh, great, she did a great job, really informative about uh, how uh, games are actually helping the youth of America instead of hindering them like many so, so many people think. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were in that line forever. Thankfully, we got to just stay in our seats and hang out for the QA with Jerry and Mike. Yeah. So we're here at PAX. This is the Super Street Fighter 4 tournament. And as you know, I've been training with Lemon, Jago, and a couple of the East Coast monsters. Now, TJ and I aren't in the same bracket, thank God. He's over there in Station 13. I'm here in 7. I'm checking out the competition now, just scoping out. I brought Beatrice with me. I think this is just where we study each other. Justin, give me strength. <laughs> Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Okay. I'm not going to ask Uh-oh, stealth, stealth Episode 3 question. Here we go. Since, since Portal and Half-Life are in the same universe, yeah. is there any nugget, anything that you may throw to the fans in Portal 2 that might please Half-Life gamers in the meantime? Well, yeah, it, uh, you know, in Portal 1, we had some nods to the Half-Life yeah, yeah. series. Yeah, were very appreciative. Yeah, and, and, you know, they're there in Portal 2 as well. Okay. Uh, they're uh, using the same light touch. If you're someone who knows the Half-Life series, you'll yeah. probably pick up on them and appreciate them. And if you're not familiar with the Half-Life series, it'll they probably just pass right yeah. by you and you won't even notice okay. it.
guys, I'm Katie Cup Cake from Chocolate Lemon, and I am here with Riku and Xi'an from Kingdom Hearts. So I just want to ask them a few questions. So how long did it take you guys to make your costumes? Um, well, that was me. Uh -huh. yes. uh, the coat took me two days, maybe. Uh, hair coat also took me two days. Um, I have a Kingdom Hearts tattoo on my back, so what do you guys feel about me having you guys on my back? I don't think that's excellent. I think that's pretty awesome. You want to see it? Sure. I'll show the camera. Oh, dang! That's a marble bath. CL Gamer, Chocolate Lemon Gamer. Alright, great. So we're off to a fantastic start. I'm Peter Gasser with CLGamer.com. I'm here with Reed Man from Fan Gamer, makers of some great gamer merchandise that I've still not been able to get because it's always sold out. Um, the energy mug, especially. I mean, come on. Chicken Lemon Gamer.com. Chicken Lemon. Lemon Chicken, really. Come on, get it right or get it. Hey guys, it's Oz from CLGamer.com. I'm with the staff of Mega64, the awesomest website that you can ever check out. Oh, wow. How long have you guys been doing this? I can't even remember. You guys have been just coming together. We, we started back in 2003. Three. Yeah, three. That's it. That's so, it. eight years. Going? And going. Do you guys have any uh, milestones that you're going for? I mean, you've already accomplished so much. I don't know oh, what yeah. else you could possibly do. Uh, Oscar. Okay. So, okay. once that happens, then I'll be happy. But right now, the, I'm not satisfied. Uh, you know, surviving 2012. That is good, yeah. the world. I've heard about those, like, caves in the Midwest where they've kept a seed for every plant in the world. So, yeah. I'm going to be there. In Australia, where they can't have Mortal Kombat. They can't have Mortal Kombat. Well, no, if they can't have Mortal Kombat, there's no point. Well, this summer, I'm going to hit the Vatican. Just make sure. Do you want to go global? I hear South I hear America. I don't know. I might just hook up some consoles there and see if, uh, if we, you know, we got Shigeru Miyamoto to be in a skit once, so we think the Pope might not be that hard to get. We're trying to get Pope Benedict in our Call of Duty skit. It's going to be pretty good. That would have been done. <laughs> So Magic Gathering had been around since you know the early 90s. I grew up with it. I'm sure you probably grew up with it. Yeah. What do you think Magic Gathering has uh, in terms of effect on people's you know daily lives and, and how it brings a community of gamers and you know new gamers, old gamers together? Oh, I think it, you, you couldn't have said it better. You know, I mean that's just that's great. Like the, the it is. It's it's gamers. It's str strategy. Gamers who love strategy who like to. Um, Battle their wits against each other, and you know, uh, you know, come together, even casually, just play. You know, we've got tournaments, all those different styles of ways for the community to come together. And a big part of that is going to your store, right? Going to your your local gaming Friday store, Night Magic. playing Friday Night Magic, sitting down with a group of friends, and being like, "Hey, you're my buddy. Let's play some Magic," and actually have that kind of one-on-one -on -one yeah. or group interactions. I think it, it continues to bring gamers together. I mean, look at PAX, right? It's a huge gamer show. Everyone's coming together. That, that That's kind of an experience that Wizards of the Coast believes in their products. It's all about supporting the gamers. Very true. All right, well, Mike, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Look forward to Magic the Gathering. Eric, the intern at CL Gamer. Thanks very much, guys. Like, I pretty much got in here on just not giving up, just being stubborn. That's how we got this far, right, Teach? L.A. Noir is set in the 40s where he follows Detective Phelps through various investigations. 
Thanks to new tech called Motion Scan, players can read facial expressions from each suspect they interrogate, giving a unique experience to each encounter. Sadly, due to underwhelming gunplay, repetitive side missions, and a beautiful but lifeless city, you think that LA Noir is a lost cause. Thankfully, the deep story and authentic tunes are enough to warrant a purchase. Just don't be surprised if you don't revisit the precinct after your final case. What's up guys, I'm Fire. And I'm Eric the Intern. And welcome to the 8-Bit Dojo where we make you better at video games. So, Eric, what's today's game? Well, today's game is a game on the side of getting blown up and it's Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Ooh, good choice. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is the newest fighting game from Capcom, which features a ton of crazy characters, crazier combos, and over-the-top special moves. So today we'll show you some of the basics so you can get better at the game. Yep, let's do this. Before getting started, you have to make sure you have the right tools for the job. There are two ways to play Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The first being on pad. Or an arcade stick. But fortunately, everybody here at Chocolate Lemon, we play things on arcade stick the whole way through. When playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on an arcade stick, the basic controller setup is as follows. Light, medium, heavy, special, partner 1, and partner 2. When playing on control pad, or pad as the pros call it, the controls are as follows. Light, medium, heavy, special, partner one, and partner two. So Eric, who's your team? Alright, I'm actually going to pick Wesker. Uh, I know he's a fan favorite, so I thought I'd pick him up. Uh, picking Trish because I'm playing a little Devil May Cry earlier, and I thought I might just throw in the Mayor Hagar. Alright, so I'll work with that team too, and we'll see what we can figure out. Alright, so back to Wesker, back to Trish, and Mr. Hagar. That's pretty uh, manly. A lot of pets That's in the back manly of the team right there. All right, random stage select. We go. All right, Let's do some the, training. The first thing you want to know about the combos in this this game is the system follows the Magic series rule. All right, the Magic we'll series see. is light, medium, heavy launcher. Light, medium, heavy launcher. That's the Magic series. They changed it a little bit from Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in the first one, but this one's a lot easier. So it's light, medium, heavy. Launcher, medium, medium, heavy, special. Yeah. Medium, medium, heavy, special is the basis of all air combos in this game. So try it. Light, medium, heavy, launcher. All right, that's and the magic. You hit up after the launcher to initiate the super jump to continue the combo. All right, so let me do this. So light, medium, heavy, launch. Nope. Oops, light, up. medium, heavy, launch. Up. Medium, medium, heavy, and up. miss the timing. Yep. There we go. Oh, but that's only seven hits. Oh, that's right, I'm not I'm not letting the full hit go. Yeah, on his Wesker's heavy, it's two hits, so you have to wait that split second to get both hits. Try it. Uh, no, I'm still missing one. How did I miss one? See, I messed up too. That's why we practice. Yep, we got it. Uh, Trish is sort of the uh, same way. She has another nine hit off her dive kick, which is down and heavy. She dive kicks in, and then she goes right into her, right into her magic series. Too far away. Yeah, that. Oh, oh, ten. You got another jab in there. So, dive in, like... The only thing that's wrong with pressing jab a lot, even though it's a fast and quick attack, it also lets your opponent get out of your combos quicker. Mm. So you want to limit them many times you press jab in any combo. So that's why when you do air combos, it's only medium, medium, heavy. And then special to knock down. Last kick. You're pressing jab too many times. I think it's because you want to press a lot of buttons. Yeah. Until more attacks will come out. That's not always the case. Sometimes less is more. You always want to keep that in mind. Well, at least you learned something today, guys. I definitely learned a lot. Hope you guys well, learned some stuff, too. Well, if you practice your basic combos and, you know, you go online, there's a ton of resources available to you, and you check out more on TLGamer.com, you too can be a better player in no time. Indeed. Wow, I think that's actually the full time we have for today. That is all we have. I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, it was a great time, you know. Stop by 8-Bit and Up, 35 St. Mark's. You can see me or Eric there or the rest of the crew. And that's a wrap, baby. <laughs> Bob Sapp reference. Do it like that! What we do is we make you better at video games. Well, that's why you're a f***ing intern, Eric. <laughs> and that's why you're here. And a beautiful, yet yeah, lifeless LA, just like my last girlfriend. Controls are simple.
<laughs> Loosen up, Eric! I'm afraid to start you <laughs> me up outside! Thankfully, the deep story and authentic tunes are enough to warrant a purchase. Fail! So We're the Ape and Dojo, and man, this is what we do. <laughs> Going in five, four, three. I'm so, I'm so, I just want to lose you. <laughs> that was too much of sass. I got cocaine Steve in the back and Big Rob G in the ring with me, brother. We got the greatest show next to Slim Jim's. Oh yeah, Elizabeth, I'm going left. <laughs>